Hello everyone, it's Phil Jones and joining me is Nick Fernandez and today we're going to be talking about two great new additions to the Marantz product lineup, the Marantz M1 and the Marantz M4. So I'm incredibly excited about these models for someone who's looking for a great compact hi-fi solution or the ability to add multiple zones of HEOs in a wide range of applications from whether it's passive listening to high quality hi-fi. So I'm gonna hand it over to Nick. Nick, take it away. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, like Phil said, this is very exciting for, for me personally. Um, being in this industry for as long as I have, you know, seeing a, this, tip, this type of product from Marantz is really a game changer for our distribution and music streaming of audio inside someone's house. With that being said, let's get into a little bit deeper on these products and how they actually work. And obviously with any type of distribution, especially when it comes from the Massimo Consumer Group, everything is on the backbone of HEOS. And HEOS platform has changed drastically over the last uh, many years. And I hope that most of you have seen and played with the new app. The new app itself is very, very different than what it used to be in, in many years ago. Uh, it's definitely more intuitive now for your end users. It has a much familiar look to other apps like Tidal and uh, Apple Music and Spotify and things like that. So as you can see on the screen here, it's, it's laid out beautifully. It's very easy to navigate and, and your customers, if they're not using it currently, will absolutely love it. We have a bunch of new features coming uh, in the roadmap, and Phil will talk about those a little bit later. Uh, but get excited for the, the direction that we're going and some of the new products that will be utilizing Kios as, as the backbone of the system. So we're going to talk about the M1 first. Um, one of the biggest um, things about this category itself is that there are a few companies out here that are making things that are very similar to our M1, but I think we're gonna take it one step further than anybody else is doing currently right now. And I want you to think of this piece as not only as a music streamer, but I want you to think of this piece as a, a true hi-fi standalone unit. You know, there's gonna be a lot of connections and we'll go over all that and the ability to add subwoofer and we'll go over that as well. But I want you to think of this unit as the ability to have a really nice, small, compact, hi-fi unit being able to use with large speakers, small speakers, in-wall, architectural, and outdoor type of speakers as well. So we're gonna be focusing a lot on fidelity quality with the Marantz units today. So let's take a deep look at the front of the unit itself. So obviously we always have an iconic Marantz gold logo right on the front so that you know, your end user and your customers will know that it's a nice Marantz built quality unit itself. Capacitive touch on the front so that if, you know, you don't want to use the app or you're just walking by the unit, you need to make a quick, you know, skip volume up, something like that. The capacitive touch is very similar to the Denon home uh, type of speakers, uh, portable speakers or home speakers that we have that would be on the top of the units themselves. Status LEDs, obviously, so we know what's going on with the network, so on and so forth. There's a, and Phil's going to show it to you right now, but there's a rubber coating that goes around the side. And unfortunately, it does leave some fingerprints, but the idea is a nice, really premium finish, uh, not super glossy, nothing like that, so that it will blend very well with any of its surroundings or any other equipment or furniture that's in the house. On the top itself, we have this nice um, perforated uh, grill that's on the top to allow airflow to come from the bottom up through the top. This unit does not have active cooling, so it's going to rely on airflow from the bottom, letting that air breathe coming right through the top itself. So let's take a look at the back of the unit and actually the bottom of the unit, but we'll start with the back. So on the back, it looks just like any other type of Marantz unit itself. So we have our, our gold-plated uh, gold um, RCAs and subwoofer terminals. We also have the smoked out gray finished speaker terminals. And then obviously just around each one, 
we, we follow our consistency with all of our integrated and our AVR amplifiers. HDMI connection, optical connection, USB, Ethernet. Uh, this does support Wi-Fi as well, so uh, 2.4 or 5.0. Uh, and then on the bottom, here's a very unique feature. So you can obviously see the, the holes on the bottom for ventilation purposes, but you have a quarter inch uh, 20 UNC count uh, thread that allows you to be able to use mounting brackets, uh, mount them to back of um, uh, back boxes. You also have the ability when you place these on a shelf to screw in, if it's a vented shelf, screw in from the bottom. Basically, if you want to just have a, an understanding of what kind of thread it is, it is the same that you would use on a digital camera, like on a tripod itself. So uh, it's a very common screw. It's a very common size, uh, has the ability to, like I said, get creative, figure out a place where you want to mount this. We're just giving you an option, right? So I know these things, instead of having a dedicated uh, prefab metal or plastic housing, we're giving you the ability to take maybe what's existing in the house and have the ability to just to quickly mount it itself. Mm -hmm. So it's a 2.1 configuration. You have the option of using an external subwoofer, powered subwoofer, or an external subwoofer with an amp. Um, 100 watts per channel, which is awesome. And the biggest thing that I want to hit home is that it's obviously, as you can see on the screen, it would, it's made in Shirakawa. So when people are thinking about high-end electronics and fidelity and quality of two-channel units, a lot of those end users and consumers, they want Japanese-grade materials, Japanese handmade products. So we're getting a very nice small package of a 100-watt amplifier, handmade in Terakawa, which is everything that matters to a lot of these people. And you think about Marantz and you know a lot of our high-end pieces, we make it a point to make sure that people know that it was made in Shirakawa. So this is another one of these products that is going to be in that lineup to make sure that they know we're putting a really good quality in that. Now, Phil, mm -hmm. do you have anything you wanted to add to that? So yes, so this is a improvement to the Heos amp that we have, um, that we used to sell in the past. One, the power is much better, plus um, it has some unique um, Marantz uh, technologies built in, and it's, as, as Nick mentioned, it is manufactured in Shirakawa. This is a, a, a very, very good, think of it as compact hi-fi piece. So, so that's the best, best we think of it. But if you think about some of the functionality that, that was in the original um, Heos amp, it has a lot of that functionality plus some, okay, with better sound quality um, and things like that. Now, somebody, Matthew, was also asking about, does it work with a flex-on wall mount? So I think you, you're, you've gotten to the back that it has the little, the little um, uh, uh, tripod mount. I'm not sure exactly what the thread is on that flex-on, but this wall mount is kind of a common, that's a common thread for a bolt, correct? Correct. That is, it's a common one that would be used on a tripod. Um, so we would have to pull up on that particular model, on that bracket, what size it is, but this is a pretty common screw. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Okay, yep. continue on. Yeah, so being a high five piece, we also know that, you know, most people nowadays obviously want to be able to listen to their music, right? and they usually do streaming of some sort. So now I can officially say, you can see it on the list itself, we do officially support AirPlay 2. So round of applause, you guys can clap in the background, it is officially here. Uh, obviously we have the ability to use the Heos app and use connectivity through Heos and have the ability now to make playlists and group things. And now with the new Heos platform, you can easily search through multiple playlists that you have. Bluetooth capable, Spotify Connect. And as I mentioned earlier, obviously we're making more and more improvements to Heos. So you'll see a lot more features, especially in the music streaming uh, with Tidal and other companies to make sure that we're giving you the latest and greatest experience when it comes down to using this new M1 amplifier from Memorance. 
on the back itself, we wanted to obviously have a nice unit to be able to connect to a television. A lot of consumers are using streaming built into the TV, or maybe they have another source that's mounted behind the television. So we are giving you full eARC and ARC support, Adobe Digital Decoding, IR learning as well. So if they want to use an Apple TV remote or their television remote, uh, they have the ability right inside of the HEOS app to be able to learn any of the volume up, volume down, so on and so forth codes. Plus any current uh, control platform that supports HEOS will be able to support the M1 technology. So like Crestron, URC, Control 4, uh, RTI, companies like that. If they don't currently support them, we are obviously trying to get them to support us, but there are some issues, let's say, out there um, for for some of that. So if it supports it now, it will support it uh, currently with these two brand new models as well. Mm -hmm. And one more thing. So you notice that it has IR. Um, because it has ARC, um, it will also support, as Matthew asked, CEC. So turn on a TV, thing turns on, TV remote control, turns the volume up and down, pretty much like if you've ever seen a Denon Home 550 soundbar. So you have that kind of capability, okay? Yeah, that's perfect, Phil, thank you. So the unit itself is a 2U high. So if you're planning out uh, your rack nowadays, uh, you're gonna have a 2U shelf and you're gonna fit uh, uh, two uh, on the actual unit side by side. But what's cool about the way that we ventilated the system that you can see in the picture, if you do wanna have the ability to stack a couple, maybe you have a 4U shelf, or again, a little bit limited on space or getting these in the cabinet, as long as the cabinet itself has some really good ventilation, you'll be able to stack these on top of each other. The bottom is, Phil has the uh, sample, but on the bottom, there's a slight curve. You place it on top, you're gonna be able to uh, sit it on top with giving you just enough airflow itself, plus the mounting features as well. So this is a great option, you know, for maybe houses that were pre pre wired for speakers in every room, but they're all in those rooms versus being back at a home run or something to that nature. Awesome flexibility. It's a great footprint, great size to to be able to hide very well. So I want you to think of it though, not as a model that we made to compete with another competitor. I want you to really think of this as a true hi-fi unit without all the knobs, displays, and buttons, and so on and so forth. And as you can see in the picture, it does have the ability to hook up to a turntable. You do need a phono stage if you're using certain, obviously, turntables, but gives you the uh, flexibility to have music streaming, TV audio, high fidelity music when you're actually wanting to obviously hear the best fidelity possible. Analog inputs, digital inputs. So this thing is going to do exactly what like a little mini system with a lot more power. So the mindset on this guy here is that it's a hi-fi, small compact system, not just a box that competes with other boxes out there in the marketplace. So inside of the actual settings themselves, you have a cool little feature where you can do obviously a stereo mode, which would be two channels, or if you have maybe speakers in a bathroom or closet, uh, his and hers closet type of scenario, you can actually put this into a dual mono mode inside of the app itself, which allows a little more flexibility, gives you the ability to have two rooms playing the exact same thing. There's not two sources independent, it's the same volume, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Bass and treble obviously is a must just to be able to tweak the system out slightly, but this is an awesome way to potentially fix a problem or, or have a solution for those one-offs in a customer's home. We do obviously do full high res up and down, but one cool thing is the subwoofer output. Having a subwoofer on a two-channel system, as we all know, or we should know, uh, enhances the sound quality and performance of that experience for your customer by a lot. So inside the app, you would basically turn on the subwoofer. This has a dedicated subwoofer out, and then you would be able to do your low pass and high pass filters so you can match whatever speakers you're using, obviously with whatever subwoofers. 
Now, some subwoofers obviously don't have their own filtering, so this is a great way of being able to work with an older subwoofer or potentially a different subwoofer on the market that doesn't have its own EQ or curves built into the subwoofer itself. Now, one of the things we keep on talking about is the high fidelity side. And one of the reasons why we talk about the high fidelity and one of the unique features with the M1 and the M4 is going to be your Marantz musical digital filtering. One of the key things on this is making sure that we're trying to get you the best natural sound coming out of this digital amplifier. Having that being able to translate that digital music or that information and try to bring it to a more natural sounding is what your customers are going to expect when they're listening to high fidelity unit like this one. So when you're thinking about our competitors and they're just trying to get music out there to the world and they're just trying to let it do its thing, we're actually taking the time, paying attention to what's actually coming in, making our adjust adjustments and obviously producing the best quality possible. Phil, I know you have a lot to say about this when it comes down to the actual tuning. So yeah, I'll let so you. if you think about it, you know, every Marantz product is tuned by the Soundmaster. Oh, got a song. So the goal is to ensure that regardless of the product, it's going to do that. So this product does not have the traditional H dams in it, not that I am aware of, but because uh, somebody was asking, will we, we see an H dam module? Uh, but the um, this Marantz musical digital filtering still gives the sound master the ability to to tune the sound to get it to 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 reach his standards of what a Marantz would sound like. So the goal is. Marantz pieces should be beautiful to look at, um, whether and beautiful to touch, and they should have that signature sound. And this is one of the ways that they did that. A lot of, like Nick mentioned, a lot of these products that are sold are just two types of multi-zone or music. There's passive listening and active listening. Passive is, you know, you're cooking and there's music playing. Um, this will work great for that, but this is also designed for someone who wants to sit down after a long day and actually play back their favorite, their favorite content. And that means it has to reach Marantz's high standard of audio performance. Yeah, nothing's worse, Phil, when people say it's just distribution of audio. It's just, you know, it's in ceiling or in wall speakers. You know, it's just why not enjoy it, right? Why not mm -hmm. get the best quality possible? And this is one of the ways uh, that we're accomplishing uh, that, that task. So mm -hmm. just a quick recap on M1. So we're talking 100 watts per channel. Um, you know, we're giving you full 192, uh, 24 FLAC, ALAC, WAVE, DSD. Again, one RCA input so that if you wanted to run another source in, whether it's a turntable or the phono stage or maybe a CD player, you have that. Uh, EARC or ARC support as well from your television. One Ethernet or Wi-Fi capable 2.4 or 5 gig. And then a USB uh, connection, USB-A on the back. So if you have any files. But the biggest one that I'm always going to keep on bragging about, obviously, is AirPlay 2, because that is the biggest question and the biggest why or the biggest ask that we've been getting over the last few years, especially as more and more people are getting more familiar how easy it is for them to use. So we are fully supporting AirPlay 2 finally with the M1 and also the M4 as well. Okay, so let's answer some of these questions. So yes. the first thing, as you mentioned, um, it works with all, it's a HEALS module. So the HEALS module is what interacts with the control system. So all of the capabilities that you see with things like Control 4, URC, um, those types of things, you still have all of that capability with the, with the, with the M1, and we're gonna continue to, to work to make it an even better to, um, piece to integrate with control systems. The next thing, the um, that 100 watts per channel is at eight ohms. Like a lot of times, the people go when they say it's 100. When you see these amplifiers, it's 75 or maybe 100 with like you know six ohms at one kilohertz. With don't worry about the distortion, right? But if you look at this, this is a hundred watts per channel driving two channels into eight ohms, 20 to 20, with a hi-fi level of THD. This is a hi-fi piece, right? So, um, and it is four ohm stable, you know? So if you want to run a pair um, four um, in walls off of this, you can. Or you take this thing at 100 watts per channel and then you add the, a sub to it, it's a pretty big sounding system. In fact, we, to test this, 
we have a pair of 702 signatures and we just hooked it up to see what it would sound like. And we were incredibly impressed at how nice this sounded for a thousand dollars. So if you're looking for a hi-fi piece for a thousand dollars and your main concern is streaming may, and maybe connecting it to a TV and maybe a single source, this is a great option and it's super, super, super compact. So, so when we say great sound, um, uh, we mean great sound. Somebody's asking if this can be bridged. This one is not designed currently to be bridged. This is a stereo piece. But if you want multiple zones and you want something you can bridge, Nick's got another thing he wants to show you. Right, yeah. Nick? Yes, this is, like I said on the last call, Phil, like this picture to me is like the greatest thing ever in my eyes. You know, I, I'm a huge fan of Morantz, obviously, for many reasons. Uh, but in my opinion, you know, when I looked and designed systems in the past, I would always have that Marantz on the bottom of the rack, like you can see in the picture and then other companies. And mm -hmm. I was always like, man, I would wish that Marantz would get into the distribution of audio. And, mm -hmm. and so to me, this is the best thing I've ever seen <laughs> in a long, long time. This is like looking at a Ferrari or something that I wish that I can own. But this one is actually obtainable for me. Mm -hmm. Portholes line up really nice. And as you can see in my background, uh, I got a picture of one on the television as well. So I'm super pumped about this unit and I can't wait to get one in my hands, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know, I want you to think of M1 as the one zone high five fidelity piece. And now we have the M4. So we're going to give you four zones of high fidelity M1 fidelity quality, but in multiple zones all in one nice uh, built chassis as you can see here in the picture so let's take a look at the front panel itself so it's a completely steel chassis copper screws as what you would expect from Morantz and what we do with the uh, with our units of our two channel and our AVRs we have the aluminum front face the plastic molded edges which is our new design stamp on all of the new products that are coming out so this will match with all the new cinema series the model series the cd players that just came out so again back to the rack right it looks really really good when you have a bunch of Marantz units in there it's a 2u height um, it is active cooling so there are fans on it that blow left to right to give you um, some cooling on it and then in the middle where the porthole is uh, we actually have one, two, three, and four with LED status lights under each one. So you'll know if it's inactive in standby, if something's overheating, or if the channel is getting clipped, you'll be able to visually see which, which one it is as well from the front. Okay. Now on the back, I mean, this thing is a monster when it comes to feature sets and things that you can do with it. So you have four triggers so that if you want to use any external amplification to turn on the uh, amplifier you can trigger that you have four inputs and four outputs per uh for this unit so basically one in and one out per zone itself you have two optical inputs for sources whether that's a tv whether that's a cd player four usb connections one of my favorite features is the dual ethernet port so you know, and we all know salespeople forget to count extra ports on the network switch. So you basically need one and then you can keep on daisy chaining these things down until the heart is happy with music throughout the whole entire house and just loop it with a little small jumper patch cable and you won't have any issues whatsoever. The smoked out gray terminals, standard iconic. And here's where you see on the back a typical layout with coloring and wording and the way everything is labeled on the back of the unit as well. Now we mentioned it earlier, it is bridgeable and you can see right on the screen, zone one and zone two, where the uh, grayed out black area, that would be your left channel and your right channel if you wanted to, do, to bridge these uh, channels. Okay. So again, it's rack mountable. It does come with the rack ears included in the box. Now with the zone um, pre-outs on each one of them, if you wanted to add a subwoofer on the actual zone, you would you be using one of those pre-outs as a dedicated sub-out RCA cable 
for that zone. So now you can have, in a sense, four 2.1 systems, which would be in most people's minds on this call is probably the best distribution of audio you can possibly imagine. Now, again, that would be linked to an external amplifier if you're doing like an in-wall and ceiling, or if you have a powered subwoofer, just run the RCA cable. Airplay mm -hmm. tool, Airplay tool, like I mentioned before. So this is awesome. I'm super pumped about it. Can't wait to get my hands on it as well. Like I said, input and outputs per each zone on the mm -hmm. unit itself. Mm -hmm. So somebody asked a question about the um, USBs, which you're going to go actually head to that next one. So those <laughs> USB outputs, by the way, the USB outputs, you can plug in, you know, content, you know, off of a USB drive or off of a hard drive or, or thumb drive. Of course, we will make sure that we tell you what the formatting is, because sometimes it needs to be whether it's XFAT or FAT32 or whatever that's going to be. But you can run right off of the hard drive. Of course, if you have music on your network or you have a NAS drive on your network, you can pull music off of that NAS drive or off of that laptop um, laptop as well. Supports like like before, double DSD, FLAC 120, 192, um, 24 FLAC files, you name it, high res, CD quality, um, bring it on, it'll, it'll play it back. So that's kind of great. Yeah, so, you know, Phil mentioned it, you know, to me, this is the biggest thing is that a high fidelity di distribution amp, like having that quality is is phenomenal because now you can say to the consumers, well, why can't or why shouldn't I buy this company or X company? And it's like these guys are paying attention to the fidelity of music distribution. So four independent zones, four independent music streams. I can't stress that enough. For the price point that this thing is at, for $3,500, you're getting a really nice high-powered amplifier and you're getting four streams of music built right inside of this. So you don't have to, one, buy four more you know, links, so to speak, or any other type of sources. Two, it's saving space on the rack itself. And three, having everything built and designed, obviously, by us and our team itself. So there's no third party, there's no other, you know, does this work with this or anything like that? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the fact that, you know, most likely, because you guys are incredible, they're gonna have a Marantz or a Denon AVR in another room. So you can, again, now you're adding a fifth stream to this whole mix that you can throw around and play around with any of these cool groupings and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, so somebody's asking, can you run two of these together and have a passive soundbar <clears throat> ran by one and a group ran by another. Now, um, the way this works is, remember you have four, um, think of this as four M1s, yeah. right? So with inputs, RCA inputs and RCA out, pre-outputs. So if you wanted to run a, um, a, a, uh, a passive soundbar that is a two, a two channel passive soundbar, um, you could do that, right? and then of course have a sub. If you're trying to run, say it's a 3.0 soundbar with a center channel and all of that, you may wanna go with a small AVR. Like for me, this and a Cinema 70 would be the ultimate um, soundbar surround in one room and multi-zone in another room. And it would be the size, um, you would have five zones in a, <laughs> in, a, in a space that's about the same size as a single AVR. So, yeah. so tons and tons and tons of flexibility. In our building, we actually have um, four uh, of the older models, and I'm going to replace them with four of these. So I can have 16 zones um, being driven. The, by using the pre-outs, I can actually have some of the, the speakers, because we have 77 speakers in the building, I can have some 32 of the 77 speakers. Actually, we have four of these. I can have six, how many channels is that? I, my math is getting all whacked up, 32, right? I can have 32 of the speakers being driven by this and then take a, the pre-outs and, and feed the other, you know, more speakers in the room. So, so I can, I can, but I only need 16 zones, but I need to power um, multiple speakers. So tons and tons of flexibility by using the internal amplifiers plus the pre-outs or just the pre-outs or just the internal amplifiers or bridging some of them. I mean, the flexibility there is crazy. 
Yeah, I, you know, you got to just remember, guys, that, you know, the inputs, outputs, outputs uh, in spe specifically, the outputs itself are going to follow what's playing, right? So if you have zone one and you want to have maybe instead of, you know, two speakers or four speakers, maybe you need eight or 12, <clears throat> you would run RCAs from zone one RCA output into an amplifier at that point, then add more speakers. So if you're looking to do, for example, maybe a landscape system, maybe some, um, you know, uh, in ceiling or architectural on the outside, you would want to use an external amplifier to power up potentially like the landscape system itself. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we did mention earlier is that the subwoofer does use that pre-out. So, for example, on zone one, if you're using a subwoofer output, it's going to take one of those RCA cables. So you don't have the luxury of jumping that to another amp, external amp, unless that amp itself has this type of feature where you can feed or bus out into a subwoofer itself. So hopefully I made that clear. If not, throw it into the chat and we'll address it obviously <laughs> at the end. <clears throat> so once again, active cooling left to right, integration support, just like we mentioned. I'm gonna hammer it again, built, in Shirakawa. It's a massive deal. This is a high five piece. This is not just grab it off the shelf, throw some parts in it, put the Marantz logo on and say this is a distribution amplifier from Marantz. This is something that we spent a lot of time and research and making sure that it sounds as good as it looks and making sure that the expectation that you have from a two channel piece to a four you know, zone piece is giving you that expectation of Marantz. So it's eight by 100 watts of power, or like we mentioned earlier, that you can bridge it four channels, 200 watts, and then you do have additional pre-outs if for some reason you need more power or more speakers. Now remember, if you're using the 400 by two, you're basically taking zone one and zone two and grouping them in a sense together. And I'll show you on the back right here where that gray dark spot, <clears throat> zone one left, zone two right, is what you're going to connect to to bridge it. So those RCAs for zone one and zone two are now in a sense going to be working together because it's playing the exact same sound. Exactly. So <laughs> you go from having four heel zones when you bridge it to having two heel yep. zones. Okay. <clears throat> so, yep. so 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 that's the best way to, to think about it. If you use all if you use the whole thing, right? Exactly. Now you can do you know, again just zone one and zone two, and then keeping three and four separate as a normal situation. And then you would have three zones, Correct. right? Okay. Yep. This okay. also does support dual mono as well, like just like the M1 bass and treble eq as well so you know you think about potentially some unique situations where the builder put in one speaker in all the rooms right like we've seen it before a million times so this is where you just put in dual mono let it mm -hmm. do its thing you don't lose any of that stereo sound because it's going to funnel everything right through each one of those speakers itself Mm -hmm. Subwoofer out is the exact same thing on the M1. Uh, you've got to turn the feature on, and that will allow you to do your low pass, high pass filters. But remember, the key thing is to remember is that that pre out, you lose that one terminal due to the fact that you're plugging in directly into a subwoofer itself. So you don't have the ability to daisy chain at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so like we mentioned on the M1 itself, obviously this is a hi-fi piece. This is a hi-fi distribution piece. You can see in that picture in the top left-hand corner, basically all four HEOS modules. Um, the digital filtering, again, to hammer it home, it's going to give you the most natural sound that you're gonna expect from a Marantz unit, okay? So don't worry about, you know, the, ever have to worrying about the quality. If you ever use one of our two channel pieces, this is the same type of filtering, but we're giving it to you across basically four zones of audio. So this is an amazing little feature that should be one of the biggest selling points or speaking points when you're talking to your customers about other distribution type amplifiers in the market. So I want you to think of this as the hi-fi distribution of the world, right? There's not many on the market that do what we're talking about. 
You have the ability, obviously, do indoor, outdoor, landscape, in ceiling, on uh, in wall, floor standing speakers to a certain degree, obviously, right? Like we're not going to hook up maybe a pair of 801s to a hundred watt class D amplifier, right? But Phil put it to a test with 702s, and it performed pretty well for, um, you know, for a hundred watts per channel. Now, obviously, most of us would probably want to throw a lot more at those speakers, but you know, this is a great flexible amp with the accessory of an AVR, with the accessory of maybe dead on home speakers and be able to now take every aspect of the customer's house and build it around a very stable Kios Moran's dead on ecosystem inside of someone's house. Mm -hmm. And one of the cool features that we don't really have listed, but let's say a customer is, has an open floor plan has rear speakers and that's part of a 5.1. You can easily wire this up and run a pre-out out of the AVR into the M4, wire it up to those two in-ceiling speakers for the rears, and then basically flip between music distribution and surround sound if you really wanted to. So there's a lot of cool features, there's a lot of neat stuff that you can really do with the total package of the Marantz and dead on lineup as well. Yeah, so I'm going to actually ask, uh, like you see here, um, Nick has a bunch of different scenarios that you can do. So I'm going to actually ask him to kind of put together a, a whole bunch of different combinations that you can do with M1s and M4s just to kind of spark your curiosity or, or get your motor, your, your brain running on wow ways that you can apply this in, in, in homes. and. Uh, and uh, and then because uh, that's because this these two tools the M1 and M4 give you a huge amount of, of flexibility. Yeah, I, and and the great thing about this is that it's really completing the Marantz lineup in the sense of, you know, you don't have to speak about another brand or you don't have to have those awkward conversations of, well, what about the rest of the rooms? Does it support this? Does it support this? Yes. When anyone says, can it do this? You can say yes, finally say yes with no questions, no issues whatsoever. And uh, Phil is going to ask me to build a list and I'm going to send him a list of all the stuff that I want to ship to my house so I can test <laughs> all this stuff out. So that's the agreement that Phil, ha Phil and I have uh, behind the scenes. But just a quick recap, you know, we're 100 watts per channel. You're dealing with uh, a high fidelity distribution amp, which you can say, Everything is included that you need for $3,500. You got four zones of amplification, four independent music streams, AirPlay 2, Bluetooth. Obviously, we continue to improve on the HEOS platform. We have some really cool new features coming out where it's going to make it a lot easier if you have like five of these in a rack, let's just say. Um, USB inputs, optical inputs. So, um, you know, one of the conversations or one of the questions that came out, does this support HDMI in any way? No, it does not. Um, but I've used something similar in the past where I ran an optical extender and ran optical from the TV over to my rack, plugged it into optical one, optical two works really well. Or if you have TV grouping uh, feature, like for example, AVR in the main living room, and you're outside barbecue and you want to hear what's going on in the living room, you can do a TV grouping feature. So they will send that information and that audio over to the second room as well. Yeah, it's basically four M1s in, in a single chassis. So yeah, no and, HDMI uh, though. No HDMI. No HDMI <laughs> but you get pre-outs. So it's Correct. so basically what they did was they looked at it and said, most likely an M1. Maybe a standalone. So if you look at one of the pictures that Nick had, it was an M1 right below a TV with a pair of bookshelves. That's going to be a kind of kind of a common thing. I actually I'm looking at using an M1 in my in my office um, because I have a small set of satellite speakers. Whether you buy the smallest Bowers or the smallest definitive satellites and a small subwoofer, and I'm using it as a, a straight up amazing executive desktop system, right? And I can now feed it um, via HDMI. Um, I can use it to I can connect my TV to it because most people have a sort a TV and they're looking for maybe better sound and um, than that. And of course, you you can even take that um, HDMI arc and, like you said, feed it to an M4 to drive the rest of the house. Somebody was asking, is it, the M4 is it vented on top? 
Kenneth, the 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 M4 has um, is is um, active cooling, so it vents along the uh, you know to the sides because that gives you the ability to 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 stack them. So you um, you um, so there's no vents on the top of the M4. The M1 has, of course, we're using convection, so it is has um, vents on the top and on the bottom. Okay. As we get more details um, about the models, we will make sure that we we share them with you. But the goal is to make a great little hi-fi piece that you can fit into a home. Um, it's a lot easier to con to convince a um, someone to put one of these um, in a space with a pair of bookshelves than a traditional 17-inch wide component especially if all they want to do is stream music and maybe connect the TV. A lot of flexibility um, with this particular piece. Now, um, somebody was asking, Kenneth was also asking about um, if you take the M4 and you bridge it, is, is, the, is it still four ohm stable? I'm not sure, I will verify, I will check that. I know that, you know, of course, the, each of the zones are four ohm stable out of the box, but I will find out what the minimum impedance is for um, if you bridge it, but if you bridge it now, the whole thing is we, if you get a four ohm speaker, um, most for, most speakers, like if you look at some, we have speakers that are listed as four ohm, but it goes up and down. It's not gonna have a problem driving a pair of, of floor standards. Now, if you want to stack multiple pairs of in walls and bridge it, that's a different, that's a different conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, now someone said, how many zones we used to say up to, uh, up to 32, now you can do up to 64. Um, so you can have up to 64. So if you're crazy enough, to do 64. How many of how many M4s is that? 16 or something like that, or some some crazy amount? You well, can have up to 64 zones, zones in a house and have up to 16 of those zones playing the same thing at the same time. And I know it works because they actually made us set up our building um, that way to test it because. Um, uh, we just wanted to make sure that it worked for a high-end client. I have heard the M1. The, um, the M4s are coming pretty quickly. And believe me, we're going to connect it and run it through its, its, um, its paces um, in our building. So we will know every, every um, possibility of combination and app um, configuration and stuff like that. And I will make sure that when that happens, we will provide more detail. Um, like a walkthrough of the app and the real walkthrough of the functionality of the application because we want to make sure that you understand the Heels app and how it integrates with this piece. All right. So great questions. Like people are excited about it. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm already trying to figure out how I can consume a couple to put in my rack, you know, for work. But um, but we shall we shall we shall see. I know I know Nick's getting actually an M1 and M4 for research. So. So yeah, I can't man. wait. Bill. This is going to be uh, one of the, like I said, this is one piece that I've been dying and waiting for, you know, and I've had multiple distribution amplifiers and I've always looked at them as in superior to just running more two channel amplifier uh, for audio purposes, you know, so um, as most people that know me on this call personally, um, and uh, I have, you know, 12 zones of audio in my house. So I'm going to be putting this thing through every type of pace you can possibly imagine to try to see the limitations of how this thing works. Yeah, and and like I said, I I this piece here is probably going to be it's kind of a um it's it's kind of a, a hybrid. You know, you'll see these and you know two of them in a rack for custom install. Maybe somebody will use them for multi zone, but a lot of times this is just going to be I'm looking for great sound in the room and I don't need a CD player. I don't need AM, FM, you know. I, all I wanna do is play streaming services and maybe connect and play audio from my TV. And this is the perfect solution for that. It offers the quality of you would get in a traditional, what 17 inch wide, you know, um, uh, uh, product in a much more compact unit. Now, somebody was asking me what digital amplifier is in here or class the amplifier is in here i don't want to speak out of turn but we will make sure that we that we let you know um exactly which module but the goal is to make this sound um deliver the same sonic performance as all of the other 
Morant's um, class D based amplification. Um, so that means something like a you know a Model 30 has H dams and things like that, but we still want to get we still want to add get get to a quality where you look at this and say, wow, I can't believe it sounds that's this good for a thousand dollars. So it's a really really good piece. And like I said, the fit and finish is really good. The type of terminals they use no spring loaded connections. Um, um, uh, things like that. I like the fact that there is no external power supply. That kills me sometimes when they go, look how small the box is, and then they give you a freaking power adapter that's almost as big as this box to go with it. So <clears> that <throat> makes it a lot easier to integrate this because you don't have to worry about a secondary um, DC AC to DC power adapter. Everything is actually built in to, to this unit. M1 has Wi-Fi, but the M4 you need to plug it in, <laughs> okay? Correct. Correct. It does not have Wi-Fi connections on it. Yeah, so the M1 will support Wi-Fi 2.5, 5 gig um, support on the M1. The M4 does not, um, plus on, on something like the M4, especially with four streams and, you know, four zones, you know, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is have that thing on Wi-Fi where most of the time it's going to be someplace where it's going to be in a rack, um, mm -hmm. you know, from what we've noticed. So, you know, plug it in. Exactly. Always plug when, when possible. So that goes into Daniel's question because Daniel was asking, you know, why does this guy have an HDMI, but the M4 does not? Now the M1, like I said, is going to probably be sitting on a on a cabinet somewhere or in the room with you, pretty close to your TV. An M4, a lot of times, well, as beautiful as it is, may not be anywhere near <laughs> your television. It may be three stories down. So. So they said, okay, what type of things would be in a would be more necessary in a custom piece? And they decided that pre-ins and pre-outs were going to be um, uh, a more important addition, plus the Ethernet ports and the bridging capabilities and the 12 volt triggers and and all of that stuff. So that real estate was assigned assigned to that. But remember, it has TV sound grouping. So if you have another Kios enabled. Um, uh, product like an M1 or even another AVR um, in the main room um, that would be you could grab the audio from the TV using that and feed it to your to your to your M to your M4. Now the M4 does have two digital optical inputs as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you want to run TV audio out and plus the cost savings, a drastic cost savings in running a very long HDMI cord across of a house. Um, you can easily run a, an extender of an optical extender and running TV audio that way as well. So that's one of the features that I'm going to be testing out in my house because I do have a configuration where I have multiple TVs running into a distribution amplifier through optical. Mm -hmm. um, generally, I see minimal to no delay. And in, inside the HEOS app, you, you do have the ability to make some minor delay changes as well. So, yeah. you know, when you're looking at a distribution amp, to, to Phil's point, um, most of the time it is just for audio purposes, but giving you a digital inputs, giving you analog ins and analog outs, that's the flexibility that most, most people need. Now, if there is one or two TVs potentially that are in the mix, the M1, that's where you're going to use that guy. And with the M4 and potentially with a cinema series in the, in the main room for the theater side of things. So you know we're hitting all the buckets you know mm -hmm. like you know we can't jam everything in the world into the box but um we're hitting all the buckets that you know we've been asked for many years now with you know denon heos lineup with the amp the pre and so on and so forth in the drive and the, the superlink yeah so and so like for example in our in our offices um we have um like a kaleidoscape and as well as a a couple of other devices connected to a um, A1H in our classroom. And I have the ability to feed that audio, that video, I mean, the sound from that audio source to um, the entire building, all 77 speakers that are in the building. And um, the way we have it wired, we have video being fed to multiple areas. So not only, and, and, and even when you're sitting there watching the football game or watching um, the, the concert, the the lag it's it's you know it's small enough not to be distracting so when you walk in our lobby and you're hearing the the concert footage and you're seeing the and you're seeing the footage just know that we're using tv sound grouping 
um, um, to do that. And we're going to continue to do that with something like an M4. And it does a pretty good job. So um, somebody was asking about the mounting, a mounting kit that could be used for the threaded insert. Um, do you know of anyone? Um, no, it, again, it's just there for flexibility. You know, there's no, we're not designing a bracket or anything like that. Um, when I was speaking to some of the engineers and people working on the project, um, they wanted to give everybody a, a, the option of doing anything they wanted, whether it be inside of a back box behind of a TV, uh, whether it's doing something off of the mount of the back of the TV. It was just an easy way of giving you some type of flexibility. And like I mentioned before, um, it is pretty much just like the same thread as a tripod for a camera for a digital camera, basically. So um, those screws are fairly easy to get. Um, and like I said, it would just thread right into the back, throw a washer on it, you know, put it on a bracket of some sort or put it in a back box. So, so Eric asked a good question. Would a Denon Home Sub connect with this product? The nice thing about it is all Heels products work really well together. So theoretically, yeah, you could connect a Denon Home Sub um, to, you should be able to connect a Denon Home Sub with this. But we will verify. I don't want to say yes or no. You just get, Eric, you just gave me another thing to play with in the in the hi-fi <laughs> so, so right after this, I'm going to go get a Denon Home Sub and see if I can actually pair the two together just so I can say, Absolutely, yes. That's another one to put on your checklist, Nick, of checking different configurations and options. If that works perfectly, Eric, I will be the happiest kid in the world because I do not have subwoofers uh, installed in my distribution system. Um, so I do typically kick on the main system because that has the uh, uh, DN12 on it. So I hope that works very well, Eric. Thank you for giving me exactly. that idea. Yeah, and even for the M1, because I want to take the M4, yeah. we're going to replace the the one that's driving the lobby um, with an M4, and then I'm going to, if this works, I'm going to probably going to take two Denon Home subs and stick them in the lobby to add a little bit more oomph when you walk into the building. So, all right, Th these are all good questions. Like I said, I, the fact that you are asking questions means that you are excited about the product. It fills in a a um, a a, a um, a void in our product lineup to give a customer if they want a full uh, a full Morant solution, the full Morant solution. Um, and like I said, the fact that it's built in Shirokawa means that that's kind of a that's Japanese quality, Japanese engineering, Japanese manufacturing. So that just shows the commitment to the product. So lots of bang for the buck for what a thousand bucks for the M1 and thirty five. Thirty five. Okay. Yeah, to me, that 35 is right on the money for giving you the best value without adding multiple other boxes. A lot of distribution amplifiers are in that 2000 you know, to $35, $4,000 price point without any sources. So we're basically, for 3500 bucks giving you four zones and four sources all in one side of, inside of one box. Mm -hmm. And as we add, to Phil's point, as we add more and more features to HEOS and more and more updates it's going to become even more uh crucial to have all that stuff built inside and also the fact that there's a bunch of new features for heos coming out that is really designed more for the m1 m4 um mm -hmm. you know platform so to speak and going to give um, the users a much easier way of grouping and ungrouping and putting things together and you know being able to group 16 rooms like this and having it be exactly what they want so nick is there any other anything else you'd like to cover or for you out there is there any questions any more questions or comments before we let you guys go no i just want to say thank you for everyone who was on or still is on and so on and so forth for making some time um you know we put a lot of time and effort into trying to get more of these out there to you and i just want to say thank you honestly for making some time for us okay so so thank you guys very much i'm gonna actually take these questions from this ex as an excel spreadsheet and give them this give them to fernandez his homework <laughs> <laughs> so so all right guys take care and we will talk to you soon thank you